Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Well, as usual, it's been a long time since our last video, uh, but we're back in here today. We're gonna do some more work on the car. Uh, as you can see, we're missing a transmission. Everything's taken apart again, so that's the big job today. We're actually gonna go ahead and install a new transmission that I picked up for the car. Also new in the shop, we've got AC. Tell you what, sure makes a big difference in here. It's gonna allow us to keep working through the summer. The goal is to try to get this car back together before the end of the year, so we better get after it. So this is the new transaxle that we picked up for the Beetle. Uh, I got this from Benko in Southern California. Uh, this is his swing axle turbo street box. Um, basically sort of built as far as you want to take a swing axle before you dump you know, lots and lots of money into it. So the big changes for this box compared to what I had in the car is it's a 3D ring and pinion, which should be stronger, give me better cruising RPM down the road. This has a welded third and fourth as well as a 378 Super Beetle first rear upgrade. So I think overall this will be a pretty good balance for the car. I've went ahead and started prepping things. I've got new solid mounts going back in, got mid mount installed. And today we're gonna to go work on putting the axles back in and go ahead and get this back in the car. All right, so a little bit of prep work that I did the uh, night before uh, to get ready for today. Uh, this is all the axles and everything. I've actually upgraded to some MP Chromoly HD axles. If you look in close here, I've taken a cartridge roll, I've rolled off all the sharp corners on it, went ahead and polished the ends of the spades there, try to give them the best chance uh, possible in the transaxle. I also went ahead and polished the uh, fulcrum plates up, so we'll get those reinstalled. So we'll go ahead and get this hardware all cleaned up, get it back in the car. I've got axle tubes down here that need to be cleaned up. We'll set the side play uh, on the daisies uh, for the axle tubes themselves, and hopefully it'll go back together relatively quick. So here I'm going ahead and prepping the axle tube itself, uh, going ahead and get it cleaned up and get it ready to be reinstalled back on the car. I'm actually replacing the uh, split boot. I'm trying a different style this go around. I always had trouble with these uh, basically seeping oil when I lifted the car up and the axle would droop. It uh, didn't seem no matter what I tried to do with the clamping on it, this thing would always leak a little bit of oil. So I'm trying a different style. Uh, there's not just a ton of option on these split boots, uh, but I've never had trouble like this before. So kind of going back to something that I've used in the past and hopefully have better luck. Anyway, getting this all cleaned up, getting all the old uh, gear oil off of it. Uh, I need to get the gasketing material off the flange, get everything cleaned up and ready to go back in. This is one of those things that's always kind of the tedious parts of the job, but it's part that has to be done. In fact, on this one, I actually found that the flange itself had some damage. Uh, so I had to do a little bit of work on the flange to make sure it was flat and kind of fix a bolt hole that was kind of rolled over a little bit to make sure that it would actually pull down and seal on the gaskets okay. With the tubes all cleaned up, it's time to go ahead and check the shim or gasket thickness to go ahead and set the side play on the axles. This is a little bit of an iterative process. Basically, you have to kind of build this thing all the way up. And essentially, you should use one, two, or three, or however many shims it takes to get the required uh, side play on the axle. Essentially, what you're looking for here is that you have a nice snug fit, but you have free range of motion uh, for the axle to kind of move all the way through its travel and you want basically minimal in and out in play. I believe the Bentley manual calls for something like uh, eight thousandths of an inch. Essentially, I don't like much of any in play, but I wanna make sure that it moves all the way through its travel. So you can see here that I'm trying a few different gaskets. I've got sort of a thick and a thin, and I've tried uh, basically one and two thick gaskets, as well as a thick and a thin, trying to figure out what feels the best. There's really no shortcut in this. You really kind of have to do this uh, by trial just to make sure. It varies a little bit depending on the two, depending on your side cover. But ultimately what I found for me is that uh, one single of the thick gaskets or thick shims gave me the proper feel. I had a nice range of motion, no binding on anything. I was pretty happy and thought that was going to be my target for building this thing up. 
the side plate figured out on the axle tubes, it's time to go ahead and install the axles into the transaxle for the final time. Here you can see that I'm lubing up the fulcrum plates and putting them into the end gear. And then I'll go ahead and lube up the spade of the axle as well and get that slipped into the end gear. Again, the transaxle is dry right now, so this is all the initial lube that's gonna be on everything. Uh, getting the axle spade slipped in the uh, side gear is a little bit tricky. Uh, what I found the best way to approach this is actually putting your finger up through the hole in the end of the side gear to separate the fulcrum plates and then sliding the axle spade in. Adding a little bit more lube and make sure everything has got uh, free motion here, make sure there's no burrs or anything and a little bit more lube on the outside of the side gear and then we can go ahead and slide it into the differential from here. As you slide it into the diff, there's kind of a few distinct clunks as it goes all the way in and engages. Uh, you just want to make sure that it's all the way in and make sure that you don't pull the axle up and have a full complete slip behind the axle spade. Again, a little bit more lube. Everything is dry in here, trying to get a good feel for it. Moving it around, make sure everything is nice and smooth. Now it's time to go ahead and install the in play washer, uh, retainer basically. Uh, there's a little divot in the diff and a bump on the washer uh, that allows it to index. Once you put that in, go ahead and add your snap rings in. So this is a super diff that uses two snap rings, uh, whereas a stock diff would just use one. Again, just kind of more reinforcement to help keep everything together. Uh, once you get them in, again, try to do a quick test here and then making sure that those snap rings are all the way in their grooves, make sure that there's not a chance they can pop back out uh, once this goes back together. Give it a final squirt of lube, get a spin around, make sure everything feels okay, and then we can go from there. Now it's time to go ahead and install the axle tube. Uh, so we're going to take the gasket that we checked earlier. We're going to use a gasket cinch product, which I found to work kind of the best in this application. And then we're going to go ahead and apply it, uh, setting the gasket on a paper plate and sort of smearing this uh, gasket cinch all around the surface and make sure you have a nice even coating and make sure you have sort of a wet appearance on the gasket itself. Uh, flip it over, make sure you get both sides. Uh, it's kind of tricky using this stuff. If it's hot outside, this, this stuff sets up really, really fast. So you want to kind of make sure to work in a cool area as much as possible. Uh, but once you have the gasket coated, you can go ahead and use the pick again to sort of flick it up off the plate. And then from there, you can go ahead and set it down on the side cover of the transaxle. Then you want to go ahead and make sure your plastic daisy is snapped under the side cover. Uh, make sure that it's fully pressed in there and clipped in. And then we'll go ahead and take a little bit of lube here and go ahead and put some lube on the plastic cover itself. Go ahead and spread that around. This will give the axle tube some initial lubrication as you slide it on. With all that ready, it's time to go ahead and take the tube and uh, slide it down over the axle. In this particular case, I'm trying to be real careful to make sure that I have the orientation of the side cover in the same way that I had basically checked all the side plate earlier when I was checking the gaskets. Now I'm showing these stiffener plates here uh, for the side cover itself. Uh, these side covers have fairly thin sheet metal and they tend to warp and sort of pull between bolt holes and sort of arch over. And so these strengthening plates are available from like Weddle and other vendors and it allows you to really sort of get a more even pull of the side cover down against the transaxle. Put those on along with the heavy duty washers and using some nylock nuts. And then we'll go ahead and snug this down in a star pattern just the same way that we did earlier when we were checking the side plane. Once you got everything good and tightened up here, go ahead and give it one more check. Make sure you've got good free range of motion. Make sure the axle feels the same as it did on the mock-up. And if you're good, everything is all good. You can move on to the next step. Now we're gonna go ahead and install the wheel bearings and get the brake assembly all put together. Here I'm putting in the inner bearing spacer, sliding on the rear wheel bearing itself. And then I'll use a little bit of a um, piece of tubing and a hammer just to go ahead and knock that all the way down and make sure it's seated in the end of the axle tube itself. Now I'm making sure everything is real clean here. Uh, I don't want to have any sort of leaks. Um, I'm going to end up using gas essential again on the gasket that goes on uh, the bearing retainer. And so I want to make sure everything's nice and clean and there's no residual oils that are going to cause me leaks later. I'm going to slide the caliper bracket on. Then take the large O-ring, which sits between the caliper bracket and the axle tube itself. A little work there to make sure that the O-ring is sitting exactly the way I want. First, I try to sort of poke it down with a screwdriver. In the end, I didn't like the way that worked out, so I pulled it back off, put the bracket back down, rewiped the O-ring, and just kind of put it in and pushed it by finger this time. Much happier with how that came out. 
here I'm checking the instructions of the Bentley manual as well as the instructions from CB Performance just to make sure I get the proper order of everything. Double checking my that I have the correct washers that go down, followed by uh, the O-ring that seals up the inside diameter of the axle. And then from there we're going to go ahead and start working on uh, checking the gasket as it goes down on the uh, axle tube itself. Uh, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and push the seal into the end cap of the bearing housing. I tried here initially pushing in by hand the hammer, ultimately ended up taking it over the hydraulic press. Uh, that found out to be the easiest way to kind of put that together. Once that's done, using gasket cinch again on my favorite plate, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pookie up this gasket here and get that ready to slide on so I can put it on the um, caliper retainer and then slide the real wheel bearing retainer down on top of everything. A little bit of grease on this extra shim here. This extra shim is uh, included with the CB Performance Kit. Essentially this accounts for the thickness of that caliper uh, retainer or caliper holder. Uh, so this is a little, adds a little bit more stack up in the assembly uh, to make up that difference. Don't forget your um, bearing spacer there and then go ahead and slide down the axle bearing retainer cap, put in the four bolts and then go ahead and torque it to spat. With everything torqued up, I can go ahead and put on my hub flange. And so this is a Kermoli 5x130 flange from CB. And whoa, here we go. Boy, that caught me off guard here. You really gotta be careful in the shop sometimes. No harm, no foul. Uh, go ahead and by hand sort of tighten up the axle nut. I've got a torque, my torque Meister tool that I'll end up using later on to torque this up properly. So now I'm just really trying to make sure that the, everything is pulled together and the axle's in the right position. Making sure it's got a good feel, and then rinse and repeat, do the other side. Two hours later. Now here we are after I got both of the axle tubes reinstalled. I've got the transaxle level in the stand, and I'm going to go ahead and basically fill the thing up on the bench. This is a whole lot easier than trying to get shoehorn up underneath the car and doing it there. So I'm pumping the transaxle up, spinning the hubs every so often, making sure everything's got a good feel. And then here I'm pumping right to the very end just to get right up to the full mark on the transaxle. With that done, put the plug back in. And then from there, I think it's uh, ready to go back in the car. All right, well, after a long day, got both axles uh, reinstalled on the transaxle. Kind of a tedious process, uh, mostly because, you know, I still had to clean everything up from uh, removing the axles and tubes from uh, my old trans. We got everything back together. Uh, I went ahead and filled it up. I'm gonna be using uh, Swepco 201, which is an AW90. I uh, read really good things about this. I uh, believe it's a GL5 rated product. Uh, so it's got good high pressure uh, EP, extreme pressure properties uh, for, your, for a gear oil. So I went ahead and filled this thing up so I can go ahead and check for leaks. You know, I'll let this thing sit overnight. Uh, see if the axle seals, see if the uh, tube flanges have any leakage or seepage or anything like that hopefully not surely we'd hate to have to hear back in this again but i'd rather do it now than uh, try to have to do it later so i'll go ahead and wrap us up for this afternoon uh, like i said we'll go ahead and let that sit overnight uh, see if we get any leaks on the transaxle if so we'll address those in the morning uh, if not we'll go ahead and plan on getting this back in the car getting it mounted up that we can get the wheels back on it and uh, hopefully get it back on the ground again uh, once this is back in, hopefully this will end my steps back and let us continue to go forward so that we can go ahead and get uh, back on this engine here. So still in mock-up stage, I've got a few more things that I want to throw uh, this back in the car to mock, finish mocking up. I want to move my wastegate flange and work on the uh, rear tin uh, before I go ahead and break this thing down and try to start building the engine. All right, guys, back in the shop for day number two. Uh, good news is everything overnight. I uh, see no leak, so it seems like i got everything sealed up. So I've got this off the stand, we'll go ahead and try to get it back in the car. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and install a new throughout bearing while well, it's up here and easy to work on. Uh, but it should be pretty straightforward to get this all put back in and plugged back in. Uh, it should be pretty quick, so let's go ahead and get this wrapped up. So here I'm taking a little bit of wheel bearing grease. I'm going to put some on the guide tube for the throughout bearing and then put some on the release arm where the tangs of the throughout bearing sit. Uh, so this is, like I said, the late model style throughout bearing, something I don't have much experience messing with. Uh, but I found that two screwdrivers are kind of the best way to sort of pry back on the ears of the clips to sort of get them past the release arm 
Right, it's just kind of a something you have to finagle with to basically get them on there. You want to be careful not to overextend or overbend those wire clips and break them or deform them. Uh, but you need to sort of bend them out of the way enough to be able to get them past the release arm where they'll clip back around the back side and sit in the little indentions on the arm itself. After a little bit of fiddling, I was able to get both sides done. Again, just kind of something you have to play with until you get it just right. Now that we've confirmed that there is no leaks on everything, it's time to go ahead and get this reinstalled back in the car. Uh, a little bit of a hassle when you're by yourself, uh, but not impossible. Certainly a little easier if you have a helper uh, that can help you manage the axle tubes and the spring plates. Uh, this is just sort of a wrestling match where you have to go in Basically, you work the transmission up the frame horns, get the mounts all lined up, all at the same time, making sure the axle tubes are sliding into the spring plates. It seems like if you're doing it by yourself, uh, every time you move one thing, something else moves. Uh, but ultimately, you can get it there. It's just a little bit of tedious and time consuming. With the transaxle all bolted in now, it's time to move out to the wheel ends themselves. Uh, pretty straightforward process here, reinstalling the snubber, getting the bolt started in the spring plate. Uh, I'm just snugging these things up right now. I'm going to have to go in and do a full alignment on this car since there's been a lot of changes that have happened with the axles and the brakes and everything. Uh, so I'm pretty sure that my toe is no longer set. And so once I get this all together, I'll have to set it back down, string up the car, and work on the alignment. Here's kind of a better view as I put together the other side. Uh, kind of a sequence of order, order of events here where you have to put in the certain bolts to sort of pull the spring plate over towards the axle itself. Uh, but fairly straightforward process of just tightening it up, making sure that you reinstall the snubber and get it all bolted back together. Last thing to do is get the shock put back on. And so these are new KYB shocks, a little bit more difficult for me to do it by hand. So I use the jack as an assistant here, basically to get it lined up, uh, press the bolt in and then use my rubber mount to kind of tap things together. Once the bolt's through, you go ahead and tighten it all up. And then from there, you can go ahead and slide the rotor on, rebolt the caliper up, and basically wrap this job up. So what I don't show in this video here is how these uh, brake lines route, but these are a flex line kit from Air Cool Performance. And essentially this basically replaces all the hard line and is a flex line that runs from the caliper up to the axle tube and up to the frame horn itself, which allows the caliper to free float and not cause any sort of preload on the brakes themselves. All right, so that's gonna wrap up this video. Transmission is fully installed. Got the axles and everything bolted up the spring plates. Uh, so apart from some minor things like bleeding the brakes, uh, we're good to go and uh, ready to move on to the next step. As I mentioned before, next step, we'll get the Mach-up engine back in here, work on a few more things before we start the engine build. Uh, but at least we got back to the point where I put the wheels on it, get it back on the ground and uh, keep moving this project forward. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed what you saw. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to try to do some more regular updates. Like I said, we're really trying to get this thing put back together before the end of the year. Uh, fingers crossed we can make that happen. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.